Hi, Craig. I uh, just wanted to give you a real quick uh, demonstration on how to use Excel with a Millikan experiment. So uh, I'm going to load up that lab first of all. Get down here to Millikan's oil drop. And here's the information in that lab. And um, there's a simulation here. The kids actually, I think, uh, I don't know how this works. In Safari, you can just click on these links and it'll take you directly to the experiment where they can do a little setup here and play around with the uh, the electric field strength. Yeah, looks like it's taking a little bit longer to load there, but once those guys all load in there, maybe I'll click on new drops to get some new drops. It should start moving them around. Um, it looks like it's running kind of slow for whatever reason. Oh, start. There we go. So it'll start cal calculating what's going on and going through all that. Change the electric field and it'll start to move them around a little bit. Um, so I'm going up there. So, but what you're really interested in is this data. And again, this is just the same thing that you've done in the past, just, just on a slightly grander scale. So there's uh, this file here, which has data for all the students. Um, if, uh, I guess I'll just click on that and it'll load in the browser here. And you can see I've got a name and a set of data for each student here. So I'll just grab Brandon's here. His is up at the top. I'm going to drag down to the bottom of his and just copy that, hitting Control C or copying it. And then I'm going to go into uh, Excel and paste that in there. So I've got this data now in my Excel spreadsheet and I want to do some analysis here. First thing the students have to do is they've got the electric field here and they've got the mass, but we need to get the charges. So I'm going to set up another column here where I'm going to calculate charge. And of course, when they figure that out, that's just going to be the force of gravity divided by the electric field. And uh, you know how spreadsheets work, I think. Uh, so if I want to set up a formula here, I say equals. I'm going to have charge here. That's going to be equal to the mass, which is this cell. So I click on that cell. Times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8, divided by the electric field, which is this cell. So once I've got those guys all set up there, I've got a value, and lo and behold, it looks like the first one here. I got lucky. Maybe this is a, a, a single electron here on that one. Now I want that same formula to happen all the way down, so I'm going to drag this uh, and drag, drag it all the way down, and then I can choose um, Fill Down. Or another thing that you can do is when you're looking at this, you see there's a little box there right on the corner, right on the corner of that cell there. If you grab that box and drag it down for all you're worth, down all the way to the bottom of the spreadsheet, uh, it that will do the same thing. That will automatically fill down. You can see I've got a lot of values there, but once I hit that, once I let go, now I've got all the values there set up for it. So these are the charges on each of those oil drops, presumably. Now, the interesting thing is we want to be able to look at those. Obviously, if we graph those, and for Excel, it's under charts. So I've already got all these selected. They're already highlighted, so I'm going to insert a clustered column and uh, you can see that when I do that when I get my little graph here it's just complete chaos uh, I need that there I'll get rid of that so these are presumably again the charges on each of the oil drops there uh, 115 looks like oil drops so that's not terribly useful to me what I want to do is uh, impose some order on that so to do that I need to copy this column and again I can just select the whole column here I want to make sure I get all this data here, so uh, go all the way down to the bottom here and select that data, and I'm going to copy that data, because what I want to do is sort it. So I have to place it in a different column here. I'm going to put it right here, and uh, I'm going to paste it, but not just normal. If it, it turns out if I paste it, I'll be pasting the formulas, and that doesn't really work. You can see what happens. It runs into problems there. So what I really want to do there is paste a special and only paste the values from this other column that I've previously used. So when I do that, I get all those guys, and because these are just values, now I can go up to data and sort them. And I'm going to sort by that column F. There's nothing really exciting happening here. So now I'm going all the way from 1.58 to 1.6 to blah, 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 all the way through. Now I want to graph those guys. So once again, I'll set up a chart, column, and this is what I've got then. So this is, it looks like is the charges on the oil drops in order of increasing magnitude of charge. And it looks kind of smooth, of course, as you, as you look at that there. But the more you zoom in, and there's lots of different ways that we can try and zoom in on that. Maybe I'll 
go up here and tuck in a little bit more. The more you zoom in, the more we can see that the, there's that characteristic stair step effect going on. We're seeing the quantum of the electron in all these things. And it's pretty tough to see, you know, if it's just moving up one at a time here. But in some of these, you'll see they flatten out. And that's what I want the kids to notice. I want them to realize that once they look really closely there, they're going to see some higher levels and some lower levels there. Now, how do you get the magnitude of the charge then? Well, one way, I suppose, would be to go down to this lowest level here, and you could see what's happening there. And in fact, if we look at the data, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this chart because I don't care that much about it. If we uh, were just to, say, take these smallest values here, say, take the average of the smallest values, these three guys here, I suppose I could do something like equals average and then select these guys. And the average charge then is 1.6 times 10 to the 19th. Probably not a big surprise. Here's, it looks, it looks like two of those electrons, three of those electrons perhaps. So you can have the students kind of manually go through and figure out what would be the average of these things. That's equivalent, of course, to an n equals 3. Number of electrons equal to 3, n equals 2, n equals 1. Another way that you can do this, and we've done this in the past, and yeah, it's, it is a little bit confusing sometimes. One of the things that I've done is I've said, well, let's take a look at the differences between these two. Because there's not much of a difference between these guys, but there's a big difference from this guy to this guy. So let me set up a, another column here that's going to have the differences. I'm going to say equals. The thing in this cell is going to be equal to this thing minus this thing. The difference between those two is really, really small, obviously, because these are, I mean, that's, th those are both one electron, presumably. So um, we're going to expect to see a really, really small difference between those two, and that's obviously due to some sort of uncertainty or experimental error. It's kind of hard to say. So I'm going to drag down that column to get those differences, and you can see that we've got a bunch of differences now, just a random set of differences from one to the other. Well, I'm going to do the same thing I did before with these guys. I'm going to go ahead and copy that row. I'm going to paste a special over here, just the values, just like we did before. And I'm doing that so, once again, I can sort those values rather than sorting the formulas. I'm sorting those values, and those I'm going to graph now. So once again, a chart. I'll choose a column chart. And now we really see the differences. These are the differences from one oil drop to the next ordered. And you can see that there's not much difference between all these guys down here. Once we start getting in here, there's a little bit of a slope there, again, due to that uncertainty. I think it's good, important to talk about. A little bit of uncertainty in here. But we're definitely seeing those staircase steps there. Here's one. Here's another. Here's n equals three. Sorry, n equals two there. n equals three someplace up here. Maybe that's n equals four. So how are you going to get the quantum? It looks to me if you take somewhere between this guy here and this guy here and get the average of those. That might be a good representation of that quantum where n equals 1. And where is that on the chart down here? Let me uh, scooch down and take a look. I'm looking at something around... Where did those ones come in? Not those small guys here, but if I start maybe around here, look at all the... Uh, most of the 10 to the 19th, most of the 1.7 to 1.9 times 10 to the 19th. If I take a look at all those guys, that would probably be a good thing to get the average of. So let's say equals average of, and then I'll just click those guys. I'll click that whole range there. Down to, where did I say, right about there. And for some reason it didn't like that. Let me try that again. Equals average, oh, I have to put it in parentheses. We have all these guys. Again, some uncertainty in there, but we'll see what comes out of it. Uh, 1.7, 1.9, and then there's a big jump to 2.3. So I'll just grab those guys. And 1.52 times 10 to the minus 19. So that seems about right. If I um, take off some of these lower values here, and again, we can talk about whether or not that's correct to, to do that. You can see that there's some very, very low values in there. So it might be uh, appropriate to choose some slightly higher ones here. Instead of 53, I'll go up to, say, 63. And see how that changes the average. Now we're much closer to the 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. 
Was I selecting my data too much there? Yeah, we can talk about that. So anyway, that's the general idea, and um, the only difference, I suppose, would be the interface in Excel. Otherwise, I think most of this makes, um, I hope it makes some sort of sense to most students at the end. Uh, and if they're a little bit confused by it, well, they've, they've been confused in the past, too, by um, the simpler version of it. I think this has the advantage of just giving us more data to, data to look at, so they can definitely see the patterns there, rather than just the five or six data points that were in the original lab. So I hope this helps.